Welcome to our lecture today where we'll be talking about AVRT, atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia. Make sure that you differentiate this from AVNRT, which is AV node, uh, AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. AVRT basically means that there's an accessory pathway somewhere in the heart. It can be on the left side. It can be on the right side too, but mostly it's left-sided. And remember that there is nothing faster than our His bundles. So whatever accessory pathway you have, it's going to be slower conduction than the usual His bundles. So if I want to compare it to something, His bundle is like the freeway or the highway where cars can move fast the accessory pathway is just like a small street that has too many traffic lights so cars will be moving much slower and usually in exams you will hear this as WPW Wolf Parkinson White syndrome um, this these are just the uh, initial letters for the doctors who have discovered that um, their last names were Wolf, and the other one was Parkinson, and the other one was White. So how does um, uh, the arrhythmia happen? Basically, you have electrical charges going from the sinus node to the AV node. And then the AV node will get the electricity moving to the bundles of His. Now, once electricity reaches this part, it might go up through this accessory pathway and instead of just uh, terminating over here that electricity might just do a shortcut and come back to the AV node and then this cycle will continue on happening this is what we call orthodromic orthodromic means that down is through the AV node, up is through the accessory pathway. And why did I say so? It's because there's another type which is called antidromic. Antidromic is basically if you're going down the accessory pathway but up through the AV node and how does that happen electricity might go through here and then it will just go back through the AV node and just create the cycle the antidromic pathway is less common than the orthodromic but this might show up in your exam and they will ask you how to differentiate all what you have to do is remember that the accessory pathway is a slow conduction so if QRS is gonna happen because electricity went down through the accessory pathway then the QRS is going to be slow and if it's slow this means that the QRS will be wide but if you tell me that the QRS happened because electricity went down through the AV node and his bundles which are fast QRS in this case will be narrow and this is the major way to differentiate between those two if there is one disease that um, you can say I can always cure it it's gonna be WPW and why is that basically all what you have to do is just zap this area with an EP procedure EP procedure it's an electrophysiological study they go in with catheters and they cross the atrial septum 
and that catheter they will um, heat it up and burn this area and once you burn this area the patient will no longer have an accessory pathway and will no longer have any arrhythmias so in your exam they will show you an EKG and they will tell you something like this and they will show you a normal sinus rhythm but you will recognize that the P to R interval is short and you will recognize that the upslope of the R wave is slurred if you see this you have to think that this is a delta wave it would be very helpful for you to understand how the delta wave happens basically if someone has an accessory pathway over here and electricity is coming to the AV node and to the accessory pathway at the same time if you have just an electrode hooked up here and if you had an electrode hooked up here this electrode will show you a very narrow QRS because it's coming through the His bundles. But if you're looking through this electrode, which is just below the accessory pathway, and as we said that the accessory pathway is going to be slow, so this will have kind of an earlier start because the AV node is like a braking station, while this will just let the electricity go through. So this is why you will have an earlier start and it will be kind of wider than the usual QRS. This earlier start over here will produce the delta wave. But remember that, that when we do EKGs, we're not really having electrodes inside the heart. We have them outside our skin. So you will get a combination of those two. And the combination basically will let you have a P wave and then instead of having that um, interval where the AB node waits, you will see that there's an initial upstroke and this is coming from um, the QRS that is happening through the accessory pathway. And then you will have the combination of the QRS happening. So this delta wave is mainly because electricity is coming both into the AV node and into the accessory pathway but the accessory pathway does not wait so it will let some electricity goes, go in and that will cause the delta wave. Other things that you will be questioned about in your exams. Which medications should you give to those patients? But most importantly which medications you should never give to those patients? It's easy. Think about it. Which medication, if I give to this patient, will make electricity go preferentially through the accessory pathway rather than the AV node? If you give them anything that just tackles the AV node and inhibits the AV node, everything will go through the accessory pathway. And that's bad. Those medications are adenosine, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. If you give those medications, the patient will do bad, especially if they have atrial fibrillation. And the reason why it's bad is because, remember, atrial fibrillation is happening from electrical discharges in the left atrium, and they're chaotic. So each one of them will just go down in here and that will cause very fast irregular rhythms. There will be no time for the heart to fill. The car cardiac output will decrease and your patient might pass out. Medications that you can use for those patients are procaine amide. And this is probably the only time where procainamide will be the answer. 
because procainamide will block accessory pathways. And once it blocks the accessory pathway, elect electricity will go preferentially through the AV node rather than the accessory pathway. So again, medications that you should never use in WPW, adenosine, beta blocker and calcium channel blockers. But the medication that you should use is procainamide because it inhibits the accessory pathway rather than the AV node. And remember that those medications, the procainamide, is going to be used when the patient presents into the hospital and it's in the acute setting. When the patient is tachycardic, hypotensive, things like that. If the patient is too sick, always remember, you've got to shock them regardless. But for later on, those patients who have the accessory pathway they will most likely have recurrence of those arrhythmias. If they are sick, if they are um, uh, taking medications like Ritalin, if they are uh, doing cocaine, any of those illegal drugs, or even if they're drinking too much coffee or energy drinks. So what can you offer those patients? You gotta know that WPW or those accessory pathways you can definitely treat them by ablation. And um, always remember if this shows up in your exam where they have a patient coming into your clinic and all what you see is just a delta wave, the answer will be defer them for an EP study. Thank you for watching.